Hello, welcome to a video in which I am doing a rehearsal of the makeup look that I will create on myself for a wedding that I'm going to really soon. I thought this was going to be the perfect opportunity to share with you my best tips and tricks when it comes to doing your own makeup for special events. There are certain elements that you have to keep in mind that will really, really help you to have the best look possible. And of course, it's also going to be a tutorial of the kind of makeup look that I will be going for, what products I'm using, my name is Irina and I'm the owner of the blog Lipstick Cafe, a blog all about beauty and cosmetics. So if you are into makeup tutorials, tips and tricks, ingredient analysis, product reviews, then please make sure you subscribe to my channel, it would mean a lot to me. Also don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified about future uploads. So first of all, when I have to do my own makeup for a special occasion, the first thing I do is I'm thinking, what is the event I'm going to? Is it a daytime event? Is it an evening event? Is it a really big event? That's the start of the discussion always. For example, I will be going to a daytime summer wedding. So this tells me a lot of things already. First of all, it tells me I will be in natural light, possibly sunlight. Now natural light is the harshest when it comes to makeup. It will emphasize all the products you're wearing on your skin. Everything will be really visible. If makeup has shimmer or tiny sparkles in it, they will be shiny and very visible in the sunlight. So usually for daytime makeups, you have to keep in mind that everything has to be blended to perfection. The foundation, the products for your skin need to match to perfection to your skin tone. And in general, I feel like daytime makeup is the hardest to do, honestly. If your event is for night time, so if it's an evening event, the discussion is completely different. The makeup can be a lot stronger. In fact, it has to be stronger. It has to have more depth and definition to bring the definition and contours back to your face because artificial light can fade you a lot, can fade the makeup, can fade like the shape of your face. So other thing that the daytime summer wedding tells me it's that it's probably not going to suit really colorful looks you know you're probably going to want something quite natural and subtle so thinking of the type of light that you are going to wear your makeup in is absolutely crucial it will change everything you do even from skincare up to your makeup to every little detail that you're going to do with your makeup look. So I'm going to be natural light, so obviously I will have to be really careful about color, tones, blending. I'm not saying that you don't have to do that in artificial light, but in artificial light, everything is just a lot more flattering. For example, if the foundation you're using, it's not quite the perfect match for you, you won't be able to see that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I find on myself and on other people as well. And especially in evening photography, you kind of want to have a slightly, slightly darker shade just because it will photograph better and it will look better. That's what I find when I film as well. Even though I film in natural light only, if I use a darker shade of foundation, it looks so much better on camera. So there's so many elements to take into consideration. I've also been reading online some comments from professional photographers. The ones that I was reading about, they were saying that in daylight photographers don't use flash, so you shouldn't get that general flashback that you can get during the evening events. Then the next thing I would suggest you do is actually try on your outfit and add the little elements to it as well. So the jewelry, I put my earrings on, I'm wearing the dress I will be wearing. So how pretty is this? I love it so so much and I really encourage you to do this and take your time sit in front of a mirror have a look put on your shoes take your bag what's this look asking for does it ask for warm tones neutral tones is it asking for some emphasis on the eyes or would it suit like a particular lip color actually I love to wear the clothes while I'm doing my makeup because that's another really crucial thing you have to do in my opinion. The certain colors that you are wearing will completely control what type of makeup you're creating and I don't mean that in a really old-fashioned way that you're wearing blue therefore you need blue eyeshadow, no 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 no. But look at my dress for example, right? It's a pale pink 
very romantic, beautiful red tones through it. It's really, really warm toned. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. The undertones of my skin, which are so, so yellow, so warm toned. It tells me that the type of look that I'm going to go for will probably be quite natural, pink toned, warm toned browns, but not necessarily, you know, it's just a good way of kind of making sure that everything is in harmony with each other. If you're wearing black, for example, you can go a little bit more vibrant with your makeup. If you're wearing white again, you kind of have to tweak your makeup. And the other tip that I would have for you is take your time, look in the mirror. Sorry, if I keep looking that way, it's because that's where my mirror is. So have a look in the mirror and kind of decide what you want to focus on. Like, what is the thing that you want to spend your most time on? I can already tell you, I want my skin to be the best looking possible. My skin is really not the best. It has a lot of redness, has rosacea, it has acne. What I find that usually happens before these events, and I'm sure so many people can relate to this, your skin is doing fine right? It's really doing fine. And then a couple of days before the event, boom, pimples, acne, something's happening, right? So I zoomed you in to be able to show you the makeup and everything. So I will start with skincare. My event is during summer, so it's going to be really hot. It's going to be an outdoor event. So it's probably going to be about 30, 32 Celsius degrees with sun. It's going to be really hot, really warm. So I kind of expect my skin to behave differently than now. Unfortunately, I kind can't really test the makeup in that type of weather because I'm in Scotland, let's just say that. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of expect my skin to be under a bit of pressure, you know, possibly to sweat a little. So I don't want my makeup to be shifting around too much. So what I will do is I will bring hydrating masks with me, which I'm going to use the night before the event so that on the actual day of the event, my skin is already hydrated and plump and ready so that the actual skincare items I have to use under the specific makeup are as few as possible. Now, what I had in mind is to use my favorite skincare, which is the Comfort Zone Remedy Serum. And this is fantastic to kind of tone down the redness I have. Comes my skin, it's really, really hydrating. It's really thin, it's not greasy, it absorbs it really well. And what I noticed is that it's kind of leaving the skin super, super soft. So I'm going to be using this on fresh cleaned skin. And after that, because it's a daytime event in summer, I will be wearing sunscreen. So my skin is really sensitive and I really don't want it to burn. This is a chemical sunscreen and this is the Can Make Mermaid UV Gel and it's 50 SPF and it also has really good UVA protection. It is my favorite sunscreen, so I really trust it. I really hope that this won't do flashback in photography, but as I said, because it's a daytime event, I really don't expect anyone to be using flash with the pictures, so this should be fine. This acts as a fantastic primer for makeup as well, so it kind of tightens the skin and it's making everything blend as smooth as possible. So I really, really love this sunscreen and I really trust it. I've been using it for years. Stick to products that you know best and you trust. Don't start three weeks before the event to, oh, I really want to try that cream. Oh, I really want to do that treatment. I should really do some peeling. Um, don't, okay? Just don't. Just keep it simple. Stick to the products that you know and trust and use them weeks before the event so that you avoid unfortunate <laughs> happenings. Same with the products you're using on the day. Stick to the items you know and trust. I also want to mention a nice trick when you are doing the skincare, especially in natural daylight. At the end, make sure you go in downwards motions on your face so that your peach fuzz and kind of little hairs on your face are stuck downwards so they don't sit up on your skin and pick up all that natural light and look very um, unflattering in pictures. So make sure that at the end you kind of blend everything kind of downwards. So I decided I will use a wet sponge for this look. I haven't used a wet sponge in a while but I think this will thin out the coverage and blend it more seamlessly than with a brush in natural daylight. That's my judgment anyway. My favorite foundation is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation 
foundation. This is a gorgeous product. And then I have the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. This one is absolutely fantastic for concealer for me. It's very, very blurring and it doesn't settle into the fine lines at all. I definitely want this foundation around the area of my mouth and my cheeks where my skin is the driest. I feel like that's where the Lisa Eldridge one would struggle, just on the driest areas. And as you can tell, this foundation is really, really natural, so it doesn't even look like makeup on my skin. Another pump. When you apply your makeup with a sponge, it will absorb a lot of that makeup, so I wouldn't be too scared of using more because the sponge will absorb it. Making sure, because it's a daytime event, that my face really doesn't have a different color than my neck. And I would really advise you to take your time blending the products. And now I will apply some of the Lisa Eldridge foundation on the back of my hand. Just a pump like this and I will use it as concealer. Under my eyes. Around my nose. Oh, this is too much product already. Again, just taking my time, blend this well. Really need to give yourself enough time to blend, blend, blend. I feel like there's nothing worse with the makeup than when it has streaks and marks and it's not well blended. You know, like I wouldn't worry so much about having the perfect eyeshadow and having the perfect this and having the perfect that more than blend, blend, blend. And now I will take the Lisa Eldridge brush I think it's 15, yes, and I will just dip it into the foundation and use it for spot concealing. See, this is a lot of pale combined with the Bourjois Healthy Mix one. A nice trick for when you're doing your makeup in natural daylight is to skip the coverage that you just spread all over your face and just focus on pinpoint concealing. This should help you to cover the problem areas without having the coverage everywhere. I'm not going to try to make this too perfect because I will probably need to do this again after using bronzer and um, highlighter and blush and everything. No one has perfect skin, you know, and I feel like sometimes it's better to have a not so perfect skin rather than use too much product on the day and then people kind of noticing that. Everyone has freckles, pimples, discoloration, redness, you know, no one's skin is just like this perfect, uniform, smooth canvas. If you do have that, you are extremely lucky. Right, and now you're going to laugh at me, but I like to let this sit on my skin for a minute. I feel that the product kind of dries a bit and then it provides more coverage than if I would just blend it on the moment. To help the eyeshadow sit the longest on my eyes, I will be using an eye primer and this is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Eden. I have to confess, I don't really notice a huge improvement with an eye primer, but I will use it. We'll reapply some lip balm. Just to make sure that my lips are moisturized and ready by the time I apply my lipstick. I have no idea whatsoever what I'm doing for my eyes. Problem is that most palettes I have are really big and heavy. So I really want to be carrying that in my hand luggage on flight. Let's see. Um, I would really like to add some shade and definition to my heated eyes. I think I'll try and use this Chanel eyeshadow quad. It's really dusty. It's really not pigmented but I think that's the point. So I'm using the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow brush number eight and kind of gently dip in this kind of burgundy deep brown. I mean I am a bit concerned because it is kind of sparkly. 
let's see how this goes so I'm looking straight in the mirror and I'm just placing this outer corners of my eyes just to kind of push that hooded eyelid back and give the illusion that it's not droopy and I really hope this Chanel eyeshadow will work for the look I'm thinking because it would be perfect because it's kind of tiny it also has a mirror when you're doing your makeup for special events it would be very very important for you to use a large mirror to be able to see your entire face including a little bit of your dress or top the only reason I'm using this <laughs> very silly small mirrors is that so that you can see my face while I'm doing my makeup but please 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 make sure that you are not just using tiny mirrors and that you're doing only bits of your face always look in a large mirror so you see the whole picture and you see every step that you're making exactly what's going on and now I will go into this shade with the Lisa Eldridge brush number seven See, the thing that I can notice already is that I really don't like this crease color. I think it's very unflattering on me. It's way too cool toned. I would definitely need something warm toned, so a warm toned brown. Let's restart this. A little bit of micellar water onto a tissue and remove this shadow. See, now you would really want to avoid this happening on the day, but this is exactly why we are doing the rehearsal to figure out what is going best and with this dress and with my coloring i feel like this cool toned brown is really not the best now to reapply a little bit of that foundation the lisa eldridge one make sure that everything is blended again reapplying the eye primer rehearsal makeup is all about correcting the mistakes and the little thing that you feel are not that brilliant with the looks so this will allow you that on the actual day you look your absolute best so let's see what happens if i use my favorite eyeshadow the hourglass scatter light and smoke this will not be the best for providing the depth and then in the outer corner of the eye but as i said i am flying i don't have a lot of space so let's see how it goes this is more warm toned hello Look at this beauty! What a gorgeous shadow. I think this is so much better than before. So I think I can start blending the concealer. I could probably let it sit for a bit too long now. And now I will move on to, on to contouring and I really want to play with that bronzer and warmth in my skin on the outer corners and for that I will be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills cream bronzer and shade sun kissed just gently applying this once you apply it too much it's a lot more difficult to fix it a little bit more shape to my face as well color and I love that this is a cream bronzer because I think it will do good on my dry skin and again this is another bronzer that I absolutely love I've been using for a few good months now so I know how it behaves on top of these foundations again as I said it's important to use items that you trust and you know how they behave on top of each other and how they look throughout the day. I feel like I went with the bronzer in this area and I don't like that. So again, using the Lisa Eldridge, the back of my hand, I will... Yep, yeah, that's much better. I'm not sure the camera will pick up details like this, but whenever you see something's a mess, just fix it, you know, just go back, take your time, blend, blend, blend. Take a step back in the mirror, look, checking with my hands, looks fine so far, nothing's too dark, all skin goes well. 
in natural light in reality like with me looking in the mirror this is looking natural well blended but i'm not sure the camera will pick up enough of that bronzer to actually show you exactly what it's looking like but in person i think that this looks good oh i really like the skin I will go into lips now because I kind of want to see how it balances with the rest of the look before adding the blush and whatnot. So in terms of lips, I don't want anything too vibrant, but I do want my teeth to look as white as possible. I'm going to use the Lisa Eldridge in Velvet Fawn, and this is a beautiful nude that makes your teeth whiter, but it is a very 90s caramel nude. It is matching the dress perfectly. So I've got MAC in shade Ruby Woo, which is another of my favorite lipsticks. And this color really makes my teeth really white. So I will just dab this in the center of my lips, see if it kind of helps my lips to be a little bit different from the dress. See, I kind of love it for it to be so powdery and kind of not on the entire lips i don't want like really strong contours just kind of an ombre look because i feel like that's going to go better in daylight this lipstick stays on even after you eat before with the velvet fawn it was kind of um, this exact shade of pink as the dress so this ruby woo is bringing the perfect pop of color love that so for blush more bronzer setting powder i am taking the hourglass ambient lighting edit palette and you've seen this featured on my channel. I absolutely love this product. It's so beautiful. It looks gorgeous in daylight as well. And this has setting powder, highlighter, two different tone of blushers, bronzer. So I think this is perfect for traveling. It even works as an eyeshadow. I do have a video using this palette for an entire makeup look. In fact, I wonder if this bronzer shade is enough for that outer corner smokiness I wanted. Oh yeah, it works beautifully. I am saved. See how much better this looks with a chocolate brown rather than that burgundy cool toned one I first applied. I will be using the tiniest amount of setting powder from that Hourglass palette. Just in the areas where I feel like I need it. This powder is really, really well at preventing settling in the fine lines. So that is ideal. It's also quite luminous, so it works well for my dry skin. And now for blush, I will be using a cool toned blush. So I will be using this one right here. being a little bit messy with the application of the blusher because I want it to look like I am just flushed and happy and I just realized I forgot to apply the liquid highlighter. I am in luck because I'm using the Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow in shade Crystal Nebula and I'm in luck because this blends really well on top of powders as well so that's not an issue. I don't want to look like a crystal ball but this highlighter is so beautiful in natural daylight. I'm really confident this will just bring like a perfect dewiness to my skin. I'm just applying this where the light would naturally hit my face from different angles. And it's such a beautiful highlighter. It's, you know, you can kind of spread it around a little bit. It doesn't have to be very precise because it just looks like your skin is glowing, you know? It's not that type of really vibrant highlighter. Hmm, let's see if we can add a wow effect with this Lauren shade from Lisa. Just the tiniest. Ooh, what is there? Let's see. Hmm, I like this. Just that 
tiniest pop of that gold, the tiniest. It's looking just a little bit like it's making you looking twice my eyes, like, hmm. <laughs> and I will be using eyeliner and again I'm using one that I know wears really well and looks good throughout the day and that is the Aiko Black Magic Coco Edit and this is a brown which is perfect for this type of look. I would have preferred a smudged pencil to be honest but I feel like throughout the day they all kind of smudge and crease on me so I trust this liquid eyeliner instead. And I just want a little bit of a cat eye effect because I feel like that's the one that suits me the most. I messed this up. I want a lot more of a gentle line than what I had. Just like that, just a very delicate, gentle line. If on the day you feel like you're too nervous and you are late and stuff, skip liquid eyeliners. And for the lashes, I bought my favorite combo special for this because I know it's just incredible what they do to my lashes. So I got the Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. I got the primer, it's fresh. Fresh. I'm not bringing an eye curler with me. I feel like my lashes are really long and they kind of touch my eyelids anyway. If I would have all the space in the world in my luggage, I'd probably bring an eye eyelash curler, but I think it's already going to be really tight with all of this. And then I bought the waterproof version of the Lash Paradise mascara in case it's really hot and it's really sweaty and I've got sunscreen under as well. So I want to make sure that my mascara is not smudging and moving around. So I did get the waterproof version, which is gorgeous just like the normal mascara. I feel like these two products combined are pretty much giving me a false lash effect. I don't want to put false eyelashes on the day, but if you have to, I would definitely go for individual false eyelashes and very few. As I said, the natural daylight is always better to leave it as subtle as possible rather than perfect. And in terms of eyebrows, just going to make sure they have no product on. I have really strong eyebrows so I'm not going to do anything with them. I'll probably just trim them a little before the wedding. Just going to apply a clear gel. That's all I'm doing. I feel like they're too strong for this type of look anyway. And a really important aspect, right? So you finished your makeup, you step back, look in the mirror from afar. Do you want more lipstick? Do you want more anything? Just take a step back, please. This is so, so important. And just make sure that there's no difference in between the face, neck, because it's so easy to happen. You do your makeup, especially before an event, you're kind of stressed and then you forget like, a mark or a streak or something a super important thing again obviously it's not that useful for me because the weather here is completely different to how we will be at that daytime wedding when you rehearse the makeup try and do it in the morning or at the time that kind of allows you enough space throughout the day to check on your makeup have a look and see if everything is blended well sits well on the skin throughout the day what exactly is going on if for example I would notice my skin is oily. It won't, but in case I would notice that, I would make sure I've got a little bit of powder with me. Or, you know, if I notice that the eyeshadow tends to create a little crease, then I know that and I can check it throughout the day and make sure that it stays blended. Little things like that. Just keep in mind what's going on with the makeup so you know how to control it. What I've used today, I am pretty confident that it will look really, really good on the day and it's the type of makeup up that I feel like I don't have to constantly check on and that's another important thing you don't want to always be worried oh my goodness I hope this didn't melt this didn't crease this didn't whatever thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and I really hope to see you soon in my next video bye